Good morning, boys and girls. Let's review. What are civil rights? Those are rights that the government gives to people, such as the right to vote and the right not to be discriminated against. What are human rights? Rights that all people should have, such as the right to food, shelter, a job, and an education. In our last lesson, we learned about a woman who worked with First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and President Roosevelt. Does anyone remember her name? That's right. It was Mary McLeod Bethune. We will hear more about the things Mary did to help improve the lives of many Americans, especially African American girls. Mary McLeod Bethune, a dedicated teacher. Mary Jane McLeod was born a long, long time ago in 1875 in South Carolina on her parents' small farm. Mary's parents had 17 children. Mary was the 15th child. Mary was the only member of her family to go to school and receive an education. Her brothers and sisters were needed to work on the family farm. However, it wasn't an easy thing for Mary to go to school. She walked about five miles to school each day and then she walked home again. Mary didn't mind. Going to school was a privilege that few African American children had, especially girls. Mary was an excellent student. She learned easily and quickly. Mary would race home each day to teach her brothers and sisters the things she had learned at school. Mary also taught her neighbor's children. Mary's family was so proud of her. When Mary was 13 years of age, she received a scholarship to study at a school for African-American girls. The school was called Scotia Seminary in North Carolina. Mary's mother was so proud of her. She made her a special dress so that Mary would look nice when she went to her new school. Mary was sad to leave her family. They were sad to see her go, but everyone knew that Mary was going to do wonderful things with her life. After attending Scotia Seminary, Mary received another scholarship, this time to a so school in Chicago. After graduating, Mary returned to South Carolina to become a teacher at the school she had once attended. Mary was determined to educate young African-American children, and no one was going to stop her. After several years of being a teacher, Mary decided to start a school of her own. She especially wanted to teach African-American girls, as many still did not receive an education. Mary had heard about a town in Florida called Daytona Beach. A new railroad was being built there, and many of the workers were African-American men. The workers' families lived in camps. Their children did not go to school, and the men earned just about enough money to feed their families. Mary saw this as a great opportunity and came up with a plan. Now it's time for you to make a prediction. What do you think Mary's plan was? With just the dollar fifty in her pocket, Mary moved to Daytona Beach, Florida and opened her own school for African American girls. A kind woman offered Mary a place to live. A friend helped her find an empty house that later became the new school. Old broken furniture was fixed. Boxes and packing crates from local store, stores became desks and chairs, and in the autumn of 1904, Mary opened her own school. In the beginning, there were just six students, including Mary's own son. Gradually, more and more students came. Each girl paid 50 cents a week for tuition. Mary taught them cooking and sewing, as well as reading, writing, and math. There was never enough money, so Mary baked pies and cookies to sell. Not everyone liked what Mary was doing. One night, while Mary was at school, all the streetlights went out. When Mary looked out onto the street, she saw a group of people gathered together. They intended to scare Mary in the hope that she would close her school and leave town. Mary would not be bullied. As the group of people stood in a pool of light, Mary and the frightened girls watched and sang songs. Before long, the people scattered. Three years later, Mary moved her school to a new location, a 32-acre farm with 14 buildings. The 400 students at the school grew their own food. Mary was so very proud of what she had achieved. Later, Mary's school joined with a group 
with a school for African American boys and eventually became the Bethune Cookman University. Mary's school started with five young African American girls and her son. It eventually became a four year university with over 1,000 students that still exist today. Mary became the president of the school. However, Mary wasn't quite finished. There was more work to be done. Mary opened up her own hospital. Many African Americans received treatment in Mary's hospital. In addition to promoting education and health care, Mary joined forces with various groups who were campaigning for the right for women to vote. As you already discovered in the early 1900s, women could not vote. What word did you learn from the Susan B. Anthony lesson that means the right to vote, boys and girls? You are correct if you remembered the word was suffrage. Because she believed all people had the right to an education and to have books to read, Mary opened up a library that provided free reading materials to anyone who wanted it. Mary was doing amazing things. During this time, African American men did have the right to vote, but they weren't always able to. In order to vote, men had to be able to read and write. Mary held classes at night so that African American men who had not had the opportunity to go to school could learn these skills and therefore be able to vote. Once again, people tried to scare Mary away. They did not like what she was doing. Mary ignored them and continued her work. Mary always believed in the power of education. The whole world opened to me when I learned to read, she once said. Mary's efforts had not gone unnoticed. Three U.S. presidents asked Mary for advice. President Coolidge invited her to attend his child welfare conference. President Hoover asked her to head up the White House Conference on Child Health, and President Roosevelt named her as Special Advisor on Minority Affairs. Mary also became a founder and the first president of the National Council of Negro Women. For many years, Mary worked closely with Eleanor Roosevelt. Mary became director of the Division of Negro Affairs and of the National Youth Administration. She was the first African-American woman to become a head of a federal agency or organization. Mary wanted all African-Americans to become fully involved in American society. Mary received many honors for her work. She received the Spring Arn Medal for her efforts in educating African Americans. This medal is given each year by the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, known as the NAACP, to an African American. As you already have heard, Mary was part of a group of advisors known as the Black Cabinet. Who set that cabinet up? Of course, Eleanor and FDR. Mary herself asked President Roosevelt to choose more talented African Americans for important jobs. Today we have an African American president. That was President Obama. Without people like Mary, it's possible that this might never have happened. Mary McLeod Bethune died on May 18, 1955. On July 10, 1974, 99 years to the day after Mary's birth, a statue of Mary was placed in Lincoln Park in Washington, D.C. Mary was the first woman and the first African American to be honored in this way. A portrait of Mary hangs in the state capital of South Carolina, a great honor for a woman who fought against discrimination and worked tirelessly for young African Americans.